Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks very much for joining our webinar. Uh, I'm going to do quick introductions. My name is Jeff Friedman. I am the Director of Modern Government and the State and Local Government Solutions Group at Microsoft. Uh, I'm also the U.S. lead for our City Next program. City Next is a Microsoft program uh, that, that uh, articulates a vision uh, for what Microsoft and its partners are doing with and for governments all over the globe. And uh, also uh, with me are Wolf and Vladimir from East Bank Tech. Wolf is East Bank Tech's chairman. He's got about 20 years of technology industry experience. He serves on numerous boards, including the Microsoft Customer uh, Customer Advisory Board for Azure and the World Economic Forum's Partnering for Cyber Resilience Initiative. Uh, and then Vlad is the technical team lead from East Bank Technologies. Uh, he has over two decades of experience developing distributed and internet-based applications and has, as of late, been focusing on building business solutions in the cloud. So uh, kind of a quick overview of what we'll discuss over the next uh, 29 minutes or so is really talking about how to leverage cloud and mobile technologies to better manage fleet operations, uh, specifically snowplow, uh, fleet and vendor operations, although the Snow IQ uh, technology is derivative of East Bank's uh, Transit IQ solution, which uh, is, is, a, is a set of tools that can help you uh, more broadly manage your fleet operations. And so with that, I turn it over to Wolf. Thank you, Jeff, uh, and thank you everyone for joining us today on hearing how to use technology in order to uh, turn uh, fleet management uh, into a more nimble operation. So I'll just take a few minutes to introduce East Bank Technologies, assuming that uh, not uh, everyone knows what we do. We are a software product development company with about 200 software engineers. We're headquartered in Washington, D.C. Uh, and most of our products that we build revolve around uh, certain swim lanes. Uh, in the center of everything is what we call an application programming interface, API. Um, those types of uh, technologies allow systems to become open, uh, but also manageable, and to interoperate, meaning that they can exchange data where previously they might not be able to exchange data with outside systems internally, and essentially, we're breaking through uh, technology silos using uh, APIs. And on top of that, uh, uh, the uh, customer base that we've assembled over the years uh, usually uh, builds out uh, portal technologies with us, uh, cloud solutions, uh, which is what we're going to focus on today, um, and uh, business intelligence solution, assembling large sets of data, smart data, uh, and then that becomes a, a very uh, virtuous circle uh, feeding into each other for the benefit of solving business problems. So with that, uh, it's actually really exciting to have Jeff here with his extensive experience in, uh, in the fleet management sector, and maybe Jeff, if you don't mind, uh, give us a bit of background on how you got into that particular vertical. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Wolf. So, um, you know, sort of tr true confession, as I, as I do this work, when I see a partner who has developed a solution that is really directly on point to a pain, uh, you know, a, a challenge area that I experienced when I was with city government, I get, I get, re I get really excited. So. Um, I spent a few years at the city of Philadelphia's Office of Fleet Management and, you know, sort of, you know, bit, from a big picture perspective, uh, just having good information about fleet utilization was very important to us to, to have so that we could process, analyze it, and get a, get a better sense of, you know, just what, what the fleet size and configuration should should look like on a, on a very sort of I don't know basic administrative organizational level because mm -hmm. your fleet size your fleet size and configuration uh, you know the you know vehicle uptime 
uh, making sure everybody has what they need when they need it is is the you know the metric that cascades down to sort of every other aspect of the organization. So fleet fleet size and configuration dictates what your overall staffing levels need to be. Um, you know what your uh, facility footprint needs to look like, and so when you can when you can size and configure your fleet in an optimal way, uh, you know you know that you're at least starting off uh, with the right level of resources. So I would say, kind of from a you know a transit IQ perspective, this you know the the, the sort of uh, you know I guess parent solution of which uh, Snow IQ is is derived. I, you know, I was excited to see solutioning that would help you better understand. Here's here are your fleet vehicles. Here's how you're being. Here's how they're being utilized. And uh, you know, just to cut what could be a really long conversation short about fleet sizing and configuration. Basically, you want if you're going to buy a vehicle, you want to make sure that it's being used and then used uh, optimally to deliver citizen services. The most expensive part of a vehicle is typically in the acquisition cost. Uh, so if you can avoid a vehicle acquisition in the first place because you know uh, you know overall utilization doesn't demand it, you're able to save money and become more efficient. And then you know I would say specifically in terms of the in terms of the uh, snowplow monitoring whether it's in-house or or vendor, uh, you know it, Philadelphia is in a, a part of the country that uh, does experience a lot of snow, but we don't we don't resource uh, for the, the, the peaks uh, because we're not you know we're not northern tier we're up, we're not up in the northern tier of the country or mm -hmm. or parts of Canada that experience you know regularized levels of snow fall, fall year over year consistently throughout the season. So there can be years when we get a lot of snow, some years when we get a little snow. So we rely heavily on on uh, you know vendors to kind of fill in fill in those gaps when we need it and you know it, it was always it's, it's a challenge when you don't have a tool to to uh, to monitor um, your your vendors now certainly GPS was available uh, or has been available for a while but but uh, you know typically uh, more expensive in terms of the uh, you know just the cost to deploy outfitting vehicles with the right hardware, making sure you had the right solution on the back end, um, you know, calibration would become a challenge. So, mm -hmm. you know, sort of uh, ma maintaining, you know, even just maintaining the proper calibration of GPS uh, so solutions was was a challenge. Uh, and I would say, you know, in, in contrast to what um, to what this solution is, which is basically uh, and, and Wolf, maybe you can you can uh, expand on my simplification of, mm -hmm. of 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 the deployment process. But it really it's cloud based and it's app deployed. So the you know the speed to mark the speed to deployment is decidedly uh, you know more compressed than in, in you know in years past. It, you know the, the the obstacle to deployment is really you know how quickly your organization can. Uh, you know, determine how to effectively use it. That's right. So there is no proprietary system that we demand or anything like that. And what attracted us to this um, entire problem set is this challenge of optimizing uh, across several fleets, across several uh, different vehicle types, across departments, uh, where you have to um, break through these types of traditional IT silos uh, through proprietary systems that often break, that are very expensive to maintain, uh, that lock you into a certain vendor's um, uh, contract. So we wanted to uh, address a lot of these types of issues right away um, with something like Transit IQ and therefore then a solution particularly for snowplows and snowplow optimization where the need is so unpredictable and uh, when it does arise it is um, it has high visibility in the citizenship uh, and it um, it needs to be solved with uh, with very little uh, very little heads up for city managers and so what what you just described is exactly what we saw as an opportunity to deploy these uh, easy to use technologies uh, applications that everyone in their daily life uses uh, the cloud that doesn't require IT to 
uh, procure servers, configure them, get the necessary approvals um, in order to address these challenges right away. Yeah, definitely. What, um, so I guess maybe one one challenge that I saw when I was with the city was just this, uh, you know, I guess the re the requirement that, you know, when when resources were deployed uh, during a, you know, I guess a federally or state designated emergency period, there was mm -hmm. often uh, m there were there were state monies available that you had to, uh, you had to pull sort of total cost of total cost of deployment for the storm period and, you know, comport with whatever stipulations uh, were attached to receiving that money. But, you know, but essentially what you needed is a good cost accounting for what you, what you spent during that storm period. And, and I guess I would just be interested in what you're seeing and hearing uh, and how the tool can, can help support that kind of administrative reporting requirement. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And if you remember when I started talking, uh, uh, I, I talked about how to break through uh, the different IT silos uh, using certain uh, technology methodologies and tools. Um, that's exactly what uh, we've been trying to do with uh, our solutions um, using this ability to track uh, very granular data in as close to real time as possible and then making that data available to say payment systems, invoicing systems, time, uh, time tracking systems so that they can then base their conclusions and their uh, artifacts, their outputs, invoices, whatever it may be um, on the most accurate uh, data possible. Uh, and we heard the industry loud and clear, you cannot hard code these because not every uh, city is the same, not every locality is the same. They have uh, many stakeholders that um, uh, and downstream type of systems that rely on the initial fleet, the initial data tracking, the initial activity to be uh, tracked correctly, uh, hence Snow IQ. Uh, tracking these types of activities and then making it available in a very open, transparent fashion. Yeah, and it, it occurs. I don't think I've actually asked this question of you before, but it occurs to me <laughs> that that um, you know a lot of times with these service contracts with vendors, there are deployment minimums. You know, so that if you if you send somebody out for for plowing, there there's a guarantee of you know two hours, four hours, six hours, whatever the case may be. And it, it occurs to me that this is a really great tool for the governments to have because it allows more of a, you know, it's, I guess, I don't know if I'm inventing this term, but pay as you do. Um, you know, you're really getting a very precise, uh, you know, a very precise uh, start to finish uh, clocking and, uh, you know, related costing of, of what the service provider is doing out there. So, you know, you're only paying for what is done if you set up the contract that way, but you can avoid, uh, there wasn't that much snow, but we had to send everybody out and they, they plowed for an hour, but we paid them for, for four. You know, you could be in a situation where the, 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 the deployment is, is carefully calibrated to the need on the, on the street and then, you know, remunera remuneration is uh, is provided uh, you know commensurate with that level of effort. Does that does that make you sense? Got it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And uh, pay as you do is is such a good way of describing it. And uh, you should trademark it. Otherwise, I will. But uh, it is exactly <laughs> that type of visibility uh, that we provide to city managers, to operations managers, uh, to be able to only pay uh, what is uh, truly uh, what truly has been done not overpay, not underpay, and there is this transparency that uh, immediately uh, makes everyone understand uh, that level of, uh, you know, payment uh, activities that, uh, that are being charged for, activities that, are, that cannot be charged for, should not be charged for, and so on. Right, right. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into this a little, um, a little bit in, in more uh, detail more visible detail when we when we go through the demo but I guess you know one of the other challenges that was always present was during you know during a storm all everybody if you're a citizen you want to know what's happening with the mm -hmm. with with the plowing and I, I live in Philadelphia so I'm a I'm a citizen of a big city so I understand 
uh, the desire and, and, and sometimes need to know what's going on and when of the plows are coming. And so I know another, you know, another, another one of the really strong benefits of this is, you know, I mean, there's the operational management, uh, you know, enhancement that this provides, but there's also the ability to communicate back to to taxpayers and residents and, and businesses about, you know, here's uh, here, here's what's happening on the ground right now. Here's what we can tell you about, you know, the last time uh, your street was plowed. We can tell you that somebody's on route right now, and you know, you can. It's up to the the municipality who's employing Snow IQ, but you can sort of open that up uh, in a citizen in a citizen portal so you know you can hopefully offload or, or I don't know eliminate mitigate maybe ameliorate in inbound calls to 311 or your citizen services center so that you're you know you're getting information that people need into their into their uh, into their brain so they don't need to email call uh, you know and, and, and tax you know tax city government at a time when you're already taxed because you're trying to handle you know, the operational side of storm response. That's exactly right. Uh, and one of our customers went through one iteration. So the, the beauty is it's in, in the control of, uh, of the city government or the locality. Uh, the customer went through one iteration without that proactive um, information feed into the citizenship to the residents. And the next time around, they felt comfortable that uh, this type of information is accurate enough to be uh, visible to the citizens and they opened it up and reduced immediately call numbers, manual interactions, uh, the, you know, the possibility of human errors. Great. So Vlad, uh, I'm sorry, Wolf, thanks for uh, having that dialogue and I was going to gonna hand it over to, uh, to, to Vlad to actually walk us through a demo of the solution and, and show, it, uh, show us how it works and kind of show us what uh, what people on on both sides of the solution would actually see and how they can you know how they can manipulate the the tool for their uh, for their benefit absolutely Jeff thank you uh, hello everyone Jeff thank you uh, very much for your introduction and uh, yes uh, so I think it's time for the demo and uh, uh, today we're going to demo you uh, our um, cloud solution called snow IQ which is a snow plow uh, fleet management digital dispatch and reporting tool for municipalities uh, snow plow operations and, and for the public there are several uh, components uh, to the system and uh, let, let's start from the uh, from the one that actually uh, you know employees of the municipalities use, and this is right now you can see on the screen uh, the supervisor application, which is an iPad application, and um, right now we are in a, it basically mirrors my uh, my physical iPad, and you can see that I can I can drag the map around, and right now on the screen you can see the residential routes within my municipality, and <clears throat> different colors means different. Uh, uh, state of those uh, um, residential routes. For example, uh, orange means that the, uh, the, the, the work has been started, uh, yellow means that the work has been completed, and the green that work has been completed and actually inspected by the, uh, by the municipality's supervisor or inspector. And, and the gray, of course, uh, means that nothing has been uh, happening on this route uh, just yet. And so let's see how the supervisor can dispatch uh, the, uh, the work to a driver and let's say you know we, we have this route I'm going to click uh, on, on the route in the center of the screen uh, this is the route 1401 uh, and I'm going to assign a driver that I have uh, uh, in the ready state this is John Smith right now uh, and this is uh, uh, the uh, municipality employee he is uh, basically on the payroll and I'm going to assign him this job so he, he can go and start uh, plowing this uh, this route let's switch to the uh, to the driver view of the application and uh, for that I'm going to switch to the uh, to the uh, Android application that we developed as a part of the system and you can see that John Smith just received the notification that he uh, he just had an assignment to plow the ride 1401 so he's going to acknowledge this and uh, uh, because we're not actually in the field I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, run the GPS simulator and simulate the driving for the uh, for, for John so let me switch back to my um, uh, snow tracks application and you'll see that the uh, uh, John started to drive. We can uh, we can turn on the uh, GPS lock, and 
the system uh, automatically detected that John is actually in the, in the vicinity of this route, which is 1401, and started out, uh, automatically record the path that the John has, uh, has uh, uh, went through. And this is going to be uh, accumulated and processed through the system, and the system is going to start to calculate uh, the progress uh, of the of the plowing for the for the route. You can see different segments, uh, uh, different colored segments on the map right now, and uh, this is means the priority of the roads. The blue segments means the uh, primary roads, primary neighborhood roads, and orange is the secondary. And this is important when the municipality wants to prioritize, you know, some route, uh, some roads uh, uh, in regard to the others. And so John is basically going to start plowing uh, the primary roads first and then uh, uh, switch to the secondary. Uh, so while John is driving, um, uh, let's actually, you know, uh, hide this. So I'm a, I'm a uh, supervisor and uh, basically I can track the location of the John and I can see uh, the path that he went through and actually the system is going to start accumulating uh, we call those uh, breadcrumbs which is the uh, the path that John went and you can see right now this is uh, uh, right now on, on the screen and uh, basically the uh, the driver and the supervisor has the same uh, real-time view of the progress of the route uh, and you see also that the, uh, when I switch back to the maps uh, uh, view, that the map, uh, the route uh, changed color to orange, which means that the uh, work has started on this route. But uh, let's say uh, I'm sitting in my uh, snowstorms operation center, and I just received a request uh, that um, uh, a local fire squad cannot get to the facility that they have uh, been dispatched to because the road there hasn't been uh, hasn't been. Um, uh, Cloud just yet. I can switch to the uh, to the driver view, uh, and I'm going to switch to the. And I can see if I have any any uh, any people on standby. And the standby is basically a, 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 an operation mode for the contractors, which is the people uh, that you know a municipality can involve during you know the snowstorms and uh, pay them hourly. Um, and I see that I actually have Mary Johnson, and she's designated as a contractor, as you can see on uh, on the left uh, on the list here. So I can basically say uh, I can dispatch uh, work to Mary and ask her to go to to this particular address that Fire Squad can get. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click uh, uh, Add Task, and instead of uh, dispatching the route, I'm going to I'm going to select and type in the address, and the address is uh, uh, 11810. And it's not far actually from where, where Mary right now. It's on False Road, uh, and it's in Potomac. And the system actually has uh, the search uh, functionality. So even if I don't type the complete address, let's say I didn't type uh, the uh, Maryland state, uh, the system will look up the address in the database, and I can uh, select the full address and, and create the assignment. So. Uh, and you can see that the assignment is right now in the painting state. So I'm going to uh, hide my supervisor application and switch uh, to the uh, to the driver. But this time it's 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 Mary's uh, uh, you know either Android phone or Android tablet that she has on her. And uh, shortly you see that she received the assignment to to uh, uh, for the address, and she can acknowledge this. And basically, uh, because she might not be from the area, she's a contractor, right? She needs to know where to where to go. And for this, she can just basically use her cell phone or you know smartphone functionality and her favorite uh, navigation tool, and basically switch to the uh, uh, let's say in this case it's Google Maps and start driving toward this location. I'm gonna start my GPS navigation tool. And you will see that she actually started navigating on her Google Maps and, 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 and go towards uh, the assignment. And uh, another benefit of using the standard tools like this, uh, you can see that uh, because she is uh, uh, she can still use uh, the uh, Snow IQ application and uh, see the navigation tips from the uh, from the Google Maps. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, uh, while the, while Mary is driving to the address, let's see how John is doing with the route. I see that he accumulated quite a bit of a progress, and you can actually see that the progress right now is 10%. Uh, so let's see how this looks on the supervisor application. So I'm going to switch to the supervisor application, and uh, if I look at the map 
I can see uh, uh, all my drivers and also you know I can see that the Mary is going to the address and she's moving to the right direction and John is plowing uh, route 1401 and I can also click on the route and see uh, the progress of the route. And uh, this is basically going to conclude the, the short presentation. We have the system has uh, many more features. Let's say you know one of the other types of assignments as emergency routes, uh, and this is due to the nature of the uh, how this uh, how those get uh, plowed through the storms. They usually uh, plowed continuously, and uh, and and hence we have to. Uh, uh, accommodate them in the system a little bit differently. I hope you like this presentation. If you have any questions, please contact out uh, East Bank Technologies for a complete demo of all the features. Great, uh, Vlad, thanks very much. We have uh, we just have a few minutes left. Um, I just wanted to go through some of the questions that we got. Um, Vlad, this is for you. What, what happens if there's no internet connection with this solution? Oh, that's that's absolutely no problem. You know, we all know that the uh, cellular coverage could be really spotty in some areas, but the system is designed, uh, you know, to keep this in mind. And they actually, the system going to keep collecting, uh, you know, the locations from the GPS. And as soon as you have, you know, either real GPS or assisted GPS, uh, and uh, uh, and the location can be received uh, with the device, we're going to accumulate those locations. And once the device uh, goes online. We're going to burst it up into the uh, into the cloud, and the system is going to uh, get up to speed. Got it. Great. Thank you. And then uh, Wolf, I'll, I'll throw this one over to you. But how tech savvy does a driver have to be? And I guess sort of related to that, what what happens when one driver finishes the shift and another one becomes available to uh, you know to to uh, deploy on that route? Yeah. And. It's uh, so it's designed to be uh, very intuitive, uh, meaning that we assume that we have to deal with uh, very non-technology savvy uh, stakeholders, drivers in this case, uh, and so the, the apps that they interact with mimic very much the type of um, workflows and uses that they're already used to, and if you remember from Vlad's demo, uh, some of the standard GPS systems are being used, we didn't reinvent the wheel. Uh, we know that they've been using them before. We try to keep their preferences. Uh, so the assumption is that when one driver goes off the route, the system, because it's cloud-based, uh, cloud-based understands it and uh, also understands immediately that the new driver uh, is available, can be assigned, is ready to be assigned, can raise their hand and say, I'm here. And the application that they use is absolutely intuitive to use. Got great. And then I guess maybe there's like a little bit of an esoteric question for you, Wolf, but we've called it a solution. Is it a, is it a solution? Is it a product? How do you differentiate between one and the other? Oh, that's a good question. So uh, many vendors out there, uh, and I have to admit we made the same mistake before, uh, we call certain technology packages a product, which assumes that one size fits all. But what we learned, uh, especially in uh, these types of diverse environments where we have to deal with uh, different vehicle types, different localities, different use cases, uh, we, that would be misleading. A product means that you, can, uh, you only have to configure it and then you plug and play and it's ready, uh, but that would set the wrong expectations. So we purposefully call it a solution because what we found is that uh, every one of our customers wants to customize the software package to fit exactly their needs. Uh, hence, we call it a software solution versus a software product. Got it. Thank you for that, uh, that differentiation. That's very helpful. So I think we have probably 30 seconds left. Uh, this is going to be my last question. How, you know, how would you find out more about this solution? Uh, you know, if you wanted a, a, a demo uh, in person, uh, you know, virtually, and I, I uh, suspect the best way to do that is to contact either Wolf or Vlad, and of course anybody listening can also reach out to me if they have any sort of broader questions about Microsoft solutioning in the, in the city next world. That's right, and all of our contact information is uh, right up on the screen right now, so feel free to reach out to any of us. And is your website, the, say it's eastbanktech.com if, if people wanted to go on, That's on to the, uh, the web? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Wolf and Vlad.
thanks to our hosts, and thanks to everybody who joined the call. Really appreciate your time. Have a good day.